Hey guys and welcome back to another video here with angel b designs i'm angel b thank you so much for watching if you are new welcome if you're not welcome back so in my previous video i did this all over sublimation t-shirt here um now this whole shirt was white the well the front of the shirt was white and i designed this image in canva and then i sublimated it onto this shirt um, in that previous video, I did ask if you guys were wanting to see how I designed this image and camera to go ahead and drop a comment. I did get a lot of comments, people asking how to, to actually design this image in Canva. So that is what we're going to be doing today, you guys. I designed this image in Canva, Canva Pro, and today I'm going to show you exactly how I designed it. We're going to be doing this exact image. I am going to be using Canva Pro, so if you um, use the Canva free edition, um, some of the features that I use in today's video may not be available to you, but if you are interested in the Canva Pro or trying it out, there will be a link down below for you to try it out um, because, like I said, a lot of the features that I will be using in today's video to show you how to design it are Canva Pro features. If you do a lot of designing, making your own images, things like that, I definitely suggest investing in the Pro version. I typically pay for it yearly, so it's one um, yearly amount. I think, I can't remember exactly how much it costs, um, but I think it averages out to be like $12 a month, so that's really not that bad. Um, I pay for it yearly and then I don't have to think about it again for the rest of the year um, But they do have the monthly plan available if you're interested in that. But nonetheless um, This is what we're going to be doing today. You guys I will show you how I designed this image from start to finish um, So yeah, go ahead and stick around for that All right guys, so we are in Canva Pro um, now disclaimer i am going to be using canva pro some of these things may be able to be done in the free version but to be perfectly honest i am not sure okay if you um do a lot of designing your own images your own um t-shirts and things like that i would highly suggest um investing in the canva pro okay just because designing it designing your images using the Canva pro versus the free version is just it's is definitely worth the investment so everything that i'm doing will be done in the Canva pro if i do something and you don't have the option to do it and you're in the free version then nine times out of ten it is going to be because it's a pro feature okay so let's go ahead and get started with the designing this is how the final image looks but i'm going to go ahead and start off from um the home screen okay so when you log into canva pro i do have the dark theme on if you have your light theme on your background's going to be white but this is pretty much how it's going to look okay so we're going to go up here to create a design and then we're going to go down here to custom size now when you go to custom size you want to input whatever size paper you're going to be using so for me when i did this project in my previous video i used 13 by 19 paper so I'm going to switch this to inches and I'm going to type in 13 width by 19 height. And then we're going to go to create a new design. OK, so the first thing that I know that I want to do is I'm going to be having my background is going to be black. So the first thing I'm going to do is change my background color to black. OK, and I just went up to the color swatch here, changed it black. That was all I did. All right, so now I'm gonna go to my uploads. Now, this is the image that I'm going to be using. I did purchase her from Etsy. I will try to remember to link the Etsy shop down below if you are interested in this uh, clip art image here. Again, I did purchase this from Etsy. I did not create this myself. I just used this image and then I added to it to make my own design. Okay, so I'm going to move her off to the side for a second, and then I'm going to go up to text and I'm going to grab some text. And I'm just going to type in the word all caps dope. Um, now I don't remember the font I used, so 
Let me go over to my other tab here. So Elysium was the font that I used. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that the word dope is selected and I'm, then I'm going to come up here to, um, you know, the font drop down menu here. And this was, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. Elysium, Elysium, Alyssum. I'm not sure. It's a Canva font and it is this crown right here um, means that I am able to use this font. Now, if you are in the free version, you're not going to be able to use this specific font. You will have to pick a different font. This is a pro Canva font. Okay. So I'm actually going to delete her for now. Um, so I started out with the word dope. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I was using kind of like pinks and purples. Oh, you know what? I do need her back. Let me bring her back because I was using pinks and purples from this image to create the colors in the word dope. Okay. So I'm going to put her off to the side. I'm going to select the text and then I'm going to go up to the text color box. Now, I was selecting colors. Here you have your photo colors. When you add photos to your canvas, Canva will separate the photo colors for you so that if you want to use the colors that are within that photo, you can, okay? So I start started off with this pink color. All right, and then I went up to effects and I went over to outline. And I basically added an outline a little bit different than the actual color. So let me go in here. And then I made the color a little bit similar to the pink I already have, but a little bit different. OK? And now there's the first word, dope. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate that and kind of like line it up to where it's overlapping the other word. And then I'm going to, I believe I changed that to the purple color. I went to effects. And then again, just made the outline a little bit darker. Okay, then we're going to select it. We're going to duplicate it and just kind of line it up. And then I think I did blue. Did I do blue? Yep, I did a blue color. No, it's kind of like a darker pinky, I mean, a, tar a darker purple color. So this was it right here. It's a purple, but it's like a darker purple. And then we're gonna go to effects and we're going to change this color to a darker, still purple, just a darker purple. Okay, then I'm gonna select the pink, duplicate that, and put that on top. I'm gonna select the lighter purple, duplicate that. Select the darker purple, duplicate that, and layer it. Okay, so that's pretty much all I did for the background, the word dope, okay? Super simple, it's just a play on colors and then a lot of duplicating once you get the three colors set or the three colors that you want, okay? So all I did was put text, pick my color, add the outline effect, and then change that color as well. And then duplicated it and lined it up, okay? So next, I need her to be at the front so we can put her on top. So basically I'm just gonna go ahead and line her up with the top and the bottom and kind of center it. Now, 
What I need to do is add an outline to her just because when you put this image on top of the text, um, because there's no separation, it kind of gets a little muddled. Like this butterfly here, you probably wouldn't even notice it on the shirt. It just kind of gets a little bit muddled. So what I want to do is I want to add an outline to the image and it's going to create, you'll see that it'll kind of create a little bit of separation and kind of make the image pop without losing the background. Okay. So what I'm going to do is make sure that the, the girl is highlighted here and I'm going to go up to edit photo. And then we are going to go to FX effects and we're going to select shadow. And then we are going to select outline. Now, as you can see, let me go back to none. Watch the image, the girl. When I select outline, it it puts a black outline around her. And it, like I said, it kind of creates that separation between the girl and the background so that they both still pop and you can see both and the colors just mesh really, really, really well, really, really well. Without the outline to me, it looks a little muddled, like mushy. When you add the outline, it kind of just, I don't know, it gives it that oomph that, that, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about, okay? Um, you can obviously change the size of the outline. You can make it bigger or smaller. I don't want it to be too, too big. I don't want it to be too, like, I don't need a huge outline like this, right? That's a little too much. That's doing too much. Just, just a little bit of an outline just to kind of, like I said, create that little oomph. You can blur it if you want to and make it like a shadow but I kind of like the harsh outline because it's it's giving what I need it to give. Um, you can change the distance so it'll look kind of like an offset um, instead of being an outline. So like something like this, as you can see, it'll create like an offset effect rather than an outline. So you're not going to have, you have the outline here on the bottom, but you don't necessarily have it here up at the top. So this is more of like an offset, whereas this is going to be like a true outline, okay? And then you can also change the intensity. So this kind of looks a little blurry. So it's just like a little shadow effect, um, or you can go a full outline, okay? I definitely like the full outline. It's giving what I need it to give. Um, you can do glow which is, like I said, just a shadow effect, or you can do a drop shadow. But I think the outline for me, it's giving what I needed to give. Okay. And that was basically it as far as the image, you guys. That was all I did. It's just a lot of kind of manipulating the elements that are already there. Now, if you watch my previous video, you saw that I did this image as an all over sublimation image on a silky sock shirt, right? So basically I put this on a white shirt and completely did a full sublimation on the shirt from collar to the bottom all the way down. So what I did was I kind of left my image just like this, but my the image did end up being a tad bit too big. Like I, when I wear the shirt, it's a little um, kind of stretched out a little bit, okay? So I would have preferred the image to be a little bit smaller. One way that you can kind of measure how your image is going to look is you can go up here to elements and you can bring in a t-shirt, okay? So the first thing you wanna do before you do this though is you wanna take your four pieces of your um, printer paper. So I'm going to be using, or in the previous video, I used 13 by 19 A sub paper. So what I did was I could, well, I didn't do it in that video, but I'm letting you know this as just kind of like a little tip. Um, if you are going to attempt this all over sublimation shirt, um, what you can do is take the four piece, take four pieces of the 13 by 19 paper and put them together the way you would if you were about to sublimate it. Then take your shirt and line it up, like lay it down on top of the paper and kind of make a mental note of how much of the paper the shirt covers. 
so that when you come into Canva Pro, you can take your t-shirt image here and kind of spread it out the way that it would look on the actual paper, okay? So for me, I know that when I was doing this, my image kind of looked like this on the paper. The sleeves were off a little bit. I had a lot at the top, a lot at the bottom. This is pretty much how my shirt looked when I laid it on the four pieces of paper. So now what I'm gonna do is position this to the back and this is going to let me know that this is how big my image is going to look on my shirt. And to be honest, this is pretty much how that image did look on my shirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this t-shirt and then I'm going to highlight all of these. And if I were to literally put a side by side of my, my t-shirt that I made, this is pretty much how it looked. Okay. So what you could do is align it how you would want it to look, position it, center it, resize it however you think you need to resize it, however it, it would need to look. And to be honest, I think this size on the shirt would have been a little bit better. Okay. So just before you download it, so this is how I would want the image to look on the shirt, just a little bit smaller. It was it was huge, you guys, it was huge. If you haven't seen it, go to my previous video to see how I actually use this image on the t-shirt, okay? But the image was huge, okay? So I would, I, I would have preferred it be a tiny bit smaller. So this is how the image would look. Like this is how I would want it, would have wanted it to look. So from here, now that I see on my t-shirt, this is the size it should be. I'm happy with this. What I would do is go ahead and unlock the t-shirt. I'm gonna delete that because I don't need the t-shirt. It was just a template, just for me to see. I'm gonna delete that. I'm going to highlight all of my elements here and we're gonna group those so that we can move it around. Okay, so now we have all of our elements grouped, but you still wanna make sure that your image is in the middle of the paper. It's in the middle, the center. So this, these pink lines, pink solid lines, the vertical line and the horizontal line, when they're both lit up, that lets me know that my image is centered. And I need to make sure that that image is centered prior to printing this, okay? Because when you go to print it, you're gonna print it in four, on four pieces of paper, which I did show you in the previous video. So again, if you are looking to do the all over sublimation and you need to know how to print it, go to my previous video. I do show you how to print in the four pieces of paper as well, but you wanna make sure that it's centered when you go to download it, okay? I know I got a lot of comments of people asking me to show how I designed the image and I really just kind of wanted to come on here quickly and show you guys how I did it and how I utilized Canva Pro in making um, images, okay? I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys learned something new. Um, definitely don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, you guys. But this is all I have for this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them down below and I will try to either answer them or get a video out to answer it for you. But thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, bye guys.